Today we're going to talk about simple machines. We're only going to talk about three simple machines today. We're going to talk about levers, wheel and axle systems, and pulleys. A lever can be used to pivot something. We've all seen levers before. You've probably been on a seesaw or a teeter-totter. You've probably used scissors. You've probably cut your fingernails. Or you've probably used tweezers. All of those things are levers. A couple of terminology pieces here. When we talk about levers, we've got three kinds. A first, a second, and a third class lever. Those are the three kinds of levers. The piece that the lever pivots on is called the fulcrum. A first class lever is where the fulcrum, or the pivot piece, is located in between the effort and the resistance forces. So if you're on one end, the effort force would be where you are. The distance to the effort force would be how far away you are from the fulcrum. The resistance force would be the force that's applied by your friend on the other side. The distance to the resistance force would be how far away they are from the fulcrum. The other important thing about a first class lever is that both the effort and the resistance force are applied in the same direction. So if you're sitting on a seesaw with your friend, both of your bodies are applying a downward force because of gravity down. So the forces are both in the same direction. First class levers are special because the mechanical advantage can either be greater than one, equal to one, or less than one. It's the only lever that can do that. A second class lever is where the fulcrum is located on one end of the lever. The resistance force is located somewhere between the fulcrum and your effort force. So think like a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow is a second class lever. If you're using a wheelbarrow, the force of gravity pulls the load down, but you are using your arms to pull up, which means that the forces, the effort and the resistance, are both in opposing directions on a second class lever. And the mechanical advantage is always greater than one. A second and a third class lever are kind of similar. The fulcrum is located on one end in both situations, but on a third class lever, the effort is in the middle and the resistance is on the end. So with a pair of tweezers, you're applying the force in the middle of the tweezers. The mechanical advantage of a third class lever is always less than one. It's not very efficient, but that's okay. You don't wanna pull a splinter out with a lot of force. You want to be very precise with tweezers, so it works. The next kind of simple machine we're gonna talk about, you're probably familiar with, a wheel and axle. The important thing about a wheel or axle is to define which part of it is the resistance and which part of it is the effort. And it depends on how it's being used. If I was talking about the wheel on a car, the car is driving the wheel. So the effort is being applied at the axle. The resistance would be applied at the tire. If I'm talking about a shutoff valve on a sink, then I'm applying the effort at the wheel and the resistance is being applied at the axle. The last simple machine we're gonna talk about today is a pulley. A pulley is just a rope that's wrapped around a wheel. In this class, we're only gonna talk about two types of pulleys. We'll talk about fixed pulleys and movable pulleys. A fixed pulley has a mechanical advantage of one. Its only purpose is to change the direction of a force. A movable pulley is allowed to flex a little bit when a force is applied to it. A movable pulley has a mechanical advantage of two to one. The force stays in the same direction, the advantage being that it spreads out the force a little bit so that it's not just on one place. The cool thing about pulleys is that we can combine them to get significantly higher mechanical advantage. So we can use a lot of pulleys together to get a lot higher mechanical advantage, which is why you'll see systems with like four or five pulleys. On a complex pulley system, you can calculate the mechanical advantage by counting the number of opposing threads to the load. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video with us. We hope you learned something. If you like what you saw, hit the like button. For more awesome engineering videos, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time.